you know the father and the son and the holy spirit amen thank you lord thank you for father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord for this wonderful day that you have given to us lord we thank you for this wonderful time oh lord as we have gathered over here we believe that it is you who has blessed us that it is you who has anointed us to be here lord let it be everything of you and nothing of our own you speak to us a lot you guide us you lead us you reveal to us the secrets and the mysteries of your kingdom help us oh lord to live our life only for you never for our own self help us to meditate ponder study your word day and night that we are able oh lord to live our life only for you and not for our own self i thank you lord i praise you i glorify you in jesus name we pray our father amen amen, amen. amen. praise god amen. amen thank you jesus hallelujah okay praise god so over the last few uh, sessions that we had we were learning about the difference between the law and the grace and how to understand the nature of god through his grace and we were learning that if i understand that god if i understand why god gave the law if i understand the purpose of the law then i will definitely understand the nature of god this god see whatever you do under your strength is an evidence that you are under the law when you terms ra- rather than involving god we involve our strength we involve our ability we involve our power how much ever you try with your own power how much ever you try with your own strength how much ever you try with your own ability let me tell you you will never be able to accomplish what god has for you the reason is you are under the law because a person who is under grace is a person who involves god's ability and god's strength see the problem is we are more self centered self focused and self dependent rather than becoming god centered god focused and god dependent many a times in our life the problem is we are living a life more focused on our own strength and our own ability rather than to be focused on Christ his strength his ability and his power okay let me give an example see when you are in the midst of a problem there are many a times god has to push you in shove you in to where he has called you to be because even after having the word even after having the truth even though we want god to involve when we god want we want god to bring healings and even though we are studying the word we are not stepping out in faith and sometimes god has to push us out there to step out for us to step out in faith but he can only push us out there when you have involved him and you want him to work in your life now for an example okay there is a man who is a multi millionaire and he has a big mansion behind his mansion he has a very very long big swimming pool now one day he was having a barbecue and all the people come his friends come the relatives come and they all ask him 
Why do you keep alligators in your pool? Because this pool is full of alligators. Now this man goes ahead and says, the most gift that I admire above all others is courage. So if any of you had courage to jump into this pool and to swim from one side to the other side, I, on the spot, I would write for them a million dollar check. Now they all hear this, they all have the barbecue and they're all going. And suddenly they heard splash. And they turn around. There is a man who's swimming through very quickly and the alligators are trying to chomp and eat on him, but he comes out alive. Then the multi-billionaire goes running, running and says, I have never seen so much courage. Who do you want me to make the check to? And this man says, well, I want to know who shoved me in. Sometimes God has to push you in to the open because many a times we are too trained to be in our comfort zone. We are too trained to live our life only the way we want to live. And we be studying the word. Lord, I will study the word. Lord, I will learn your word. But to go preach the gospel, that is not my part. No, 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 that's wrong. Because God has, God has said, God has given us a command to go and teach the word of God, to go and preach the gospel. Praise God. See, anything I do with my own strength, now I am again under the law. Always remember, anything that I want to receive from the word of God can only be received by faith. Now, faith, this faith is my faith in Jesus, yes? Hello, yes? No? No, no. It is the faith of the Son of God. Yeah. It's the very faith of Jesus. God did not only give us his grace, but he went one step ahead and gave us the very faith of Jesus Christ. He did not only give us this faith to have in him, and he did not only give us his grace, but he has given us the faith of the Son. Not faith in the Son, okay? The faith of the Son of God. See, today we have the ability not no longer with, limited to our own strength, but now we have the ability to tap into God's strength. Okay, let me show you a scripture. Let's go to Philippines. Philippines chapter 1. Philippines. Verse 28. See this. Okay. Without being frightened in any way though, by those who oppose you, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. Let me put this in a, another translation. Let me put the end. Yes. See that verse 28. Now see this. And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries for such cons constancy and fearlessness. So what he's saying over here is fearlessness, constancy, 
this constancy, this fearlessness can only come when you are involving his strength, his ability, his power. The moment you are involving your strength, the moment you are involving your ability, you are going to continue to be frightened, intimidated by your opponents. But the moment you begin to depend your, the moment you begin to depend on Christ and on his strength and on his ability and on his power, that's when you you begin to tap into his ability, his power, and his authority. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just give me a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so see that, and do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. Do not be fearful. Many times we are not fear. We, we, we are fearful. The reason why we are fearful is because we have not yet understood the fate that has been given to me and we have not yet begun to live our life by this faith operating in the grace. And that is the reason why when a problem comes, when a situation comes, when a trial comes, we are very quickly intimidated. We are very quickly alarmed. We are very quickly uh, frightened by our opponents. But we need to come to a place where we have developed such a strong foundation where no matter what fear comes, no matter what comes, I'm still able to keep my focus on the word of God. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Yes. Yes. Okay, let me put the scripture from PPT. Okay, PPT, the right side. Okay. Now see that. And then you never you will never be shaken or intimidated by the opposition that rises up against you never be shaken never be intimidated that or that opposition that rises up against us see as we are believers in jesus and as we follow Jesus, we need to know something. And that is problems, trials, situations will definitely come. Trials, problems, situations will come. It's not that I can stay, I can live a life, not the problems will come. Situations will come. Trials will come, but, but, but God has given us his word to overcome every type of problem, to overcome every type of situation with the word of God. If I am just going to continue to live my life in fear, in worry, in poverty, in anxiety, even though his ability has been given, I am not taking advantage of his ability. You see, many a times, what has to be given, what needs to be given has been given. But that does not mean, that does not necessarily mean that we are all experiencing it in our life. Because we can only experience it in our life when we begin to take advantage of it. And how can I take advantage of what God has given? When I begin to involve 
his strength, his ability, his power. And his strength, his ability changes my thinking and the right thinking also changes the wrong action. If you want your life to change, if you want your family to change, if you want your job, uh, the, the colleagues of yours to change, then let me tell you, your, your actions need to first change. And if you want your actions to change, you need your thinking to change. So in other words, if you want to live your life changed, living a life where your family is changed, your loved ones are changed, your colleagues are changed, your boss is changed, your, your friends in the school are changed. If you want to live that type of life, then you need to involve, you need to understand, you need to agree with the promise of God. You might come for the meeting. You might listen to the word of God, but if you're not going to start, if you're not going to meditate, if you're not going to study, you might come for the meeting and you might may listen for two hours, three hours. This half an hour that we are spending, you may come and you may listen. But when you're going back, if you're never going to learn and you're never going to apply and you're never going to use God's ability, do you expect to live a prosperous life? No. Who is the person who lives the most weakest life in this planet Earth? A person, person who lives by emotions. A person who lives by emotions. Correct. And who is a person who lives by emotions? A person who doesn't know the word. A person who is, uh, focuses on the situation. Okay. See. A person might study the word. I can come and study the word. I can come and preach to you. But I can still be controlled in by my emotions in the midst of a situation. A person who knows the word but doesn't put it into practice. Doesn't put it into practice? Okay. Correct. You know who is that person? A person who hears the word. A person who comes to the meeting. But a person who never renews his mind. Right? Yeah. Because my words determine my thinking. My thinking determines my feelings and emotions. So if you want your emotions to change, if you want to be the strong person, then your thinking has to be changed. Your mind has to be renewed. And what has, you, what has your mind need to be renewed to? My mind is renewed that now I'm no longer dependent on my own strength or ability, but now I'm dependent on God's strength, God's ability, and God's power. And when I'm dependent on God's strength, God's ability, God's power, I begin to see, hallelujah, supernatural, supernatural things taking place. I begin to see deaf ears opening, blind, blind eyes opening, People beginning to speak, people beginning to walk, people begin to receive healing, people beginning to receive healing from incurable diseases, receiving healing from cancer, from liver damage, from uh, diabetes, from uh, high blood pressure. They begin to see healing from every type of virus, COVID or whatever virus, they begin to see healing. They begin to see their families are changed. They begin to see that they are getting money in their financial support. Why? All because they involved Christ. You begin to see healings, manifestations, deliverance, not because of what you do, but because you involve Christ. We are all able to see manifestation, not because of how much we pray, not because of how holy we are, not because of how much we come and listen to the word, but because of how much we are ready to apply the word, because of how much we are ready to obey the word of God. Praise the Lord. You see, Abraham, Abraham proved his love to the father by putting, by loving God more than anything else. Loving God more than anything else. 
And that love of God gave him the ability, it enabled him that even if he was going to sacrifice his only son, his son, his only son, it didn't affect him. Means in other words, it didn't affect him that not, not that he was being rude to his son, but rather if his son would have been offered and sacrificed and killed, and if God told him to offer that son, that son would be in a better place than where Abraham was. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah. So was Abraham being bad or was he giving the son the best? The best. When do you give your family the best? When you begin to obey him. Obey your family. Obey God. Obey your family. But don't obey your family if they're contradicting to God. No, no, no. But when they are in line with the word, now you obey them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, just give me a minute. Uh, Priya, would you like to share anything? Oh, yes, Alistair, definitely. Yes, I'll so, just go bring my charger. You can discuss, yeah. Praise God, yes. So as um, Alistair was sharing about law and grace, I experienced that, you know. So today I was having a tough time waking up in the morning because I had my Bible class at 8.45 and I had slept a little late. I mean, you know, it was time for me to get up. And the Holy Spirit was telling me, reminding me, see, see, it's, you know, it's time nearing your session. And my flesh is saying, no, no, sleep, 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 sleep. And then I just made a prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, this was going on for some time. It it happens quite often, okay? And then I said, Holy Spirit, I know I cannot do it on my own. But thank you, we are a you know, team and you're helping me. And I made a decision to step out of the bed. And praise God, I put some water in my eye. And I started the session, but I was still feeling sleepy, okay? 